Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Max Attack Motorsports. Um, this is episode 1 of the Time Attack build for DOS Boot. That's going to be the name of this baby right here. The DOS Boot, the 2003 Volkswagen GTI that we're going to be hopefully building into a track car. But um, yeah, I think today we'll start off with some fairly decent stuff. Now, this is my first time really working on any sort of Volkswagen. I used to have a, a 2 liter golf way back in the day that i i didn't do too much work to it but um yeah bear with me on this as this stuff's pretty new for me but that's why uh that's why we're gonna do it right anyway so um yeah we're gonna start off with the pcv delete as well as the emissions um any sort of evap control stuff that's all gonna come out today we might try and get this valve cover gasket done i think we might as well if we're gonna be taking all this stuff off and then um, while we're at it, you know, it could be a long day here. I'll try to get as much videos as I can, but we're going to be doing a turbo inlet install, catch can, short ram intake, um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. So um, the PCV, the whole emissions delete, the SAI delete, um, pretty much what that entails is getting rid of just extra lines, <clears throat> excuse me, just some extra lines that really, like over time, in these cars they tend to crack or they tend to lose their seals or um you know what i mean they just they just have issues causing leaks and and leaks not only in oil but as well as boost uh vacuum leaks so um yeah so we're gonna be taking off today mostly um there's this item right here that's going to the throttle body kind of followed around um like i said it's just an overview right now and then i'll get into it all but um we're gonna clean up this whole section so this bad boy is coming off you can kind of see the hockey puck back there so that's gonna be fully deleted um, moving over to the vacuum hoses which I don't know like I know it's 2003 back in the day but like Volkswagen like look how hideous these things are like this is literally a, like a vacuum hose like on a Dyson but um, ah, whatever you know what I mean so then we're gonna be looking at deleting this whole setup. Um, if you guys watched the other video, you guys saw that we were gonna be running A in lines for the catch can. So we're gonna try to get this fitting right out. Um, the PCV valve, the crankcase breather, which you guys can't see right now, but I will get that to you. Um, yeah, we're gonna be taking that whole thing off. And like, if you look, like look at the cracks in this thing. It's cracked everywhere. Like, you wonder why some of the stuff that was happening with it, right? Um, yeah, our crombie valve's going to be coming off. This whole intake system's coming off. We're going to install probably our forged diverter valve today, too. Um, and try to get everything done as much as we can. But anyways, um, yeah, let me show you the kit. Like, just on a side note, like these clamps. Like, one-time use clamps. Like, I don't know what they were thinking, but... Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the kit of what we got. So this is the basic ultimate, I think it was, uh, kit from Euro Tuning. Um, and as you guys can tell, this is, I forgot what the actual date is. I think it's August 30th, 2020 right now. But if you guys are thinking about using it, um, I just ordered it. So it's still relevant to everything. But um, just to see what it comes with, it comes with your manifold gasket for the intake manifold, which I don't think we're going to have to take off anyways. But I ordered it just in case. Um, I went ahead and ordered the aluminum uh, coolant neck here. So, as you can see, it comes off the block. There's the gasket with it. Um, just for added, you know what I mean, durability on the track. Because I really don't want to have to do this again. But, um, here we have our... So this is the whole catch can setup. So, T-fittings. These are all T-fittings. This is your crankcase breather, which I'm not even going to open just because because I'm doing the AN line. So, like, I'll probably just resell most of this stuff, try to get some money back. This is just a silicone reducer. Um, also comes with, you mean, all the lines you're going to need for doing the delete. And then over here, this is pretty much your basic kit. We have our resistors. So these resistors are going to go into some of the connectors that are part of the whole 
um, emissions assembly just to kind of help with um, you know, I mean, not throwing codes and stuff. Uh, this comes with some boost hose or vacuum line, sorry, uh, which we're going to use for the diverter valve and the fuel pressure regulator. And then we have our our block off delete for the SA the SAI. So there you go. As you guys can see, you're tuning the logo on it. O-ring. Uh, we have some vacuum cover caps here. So this would be used to plug a bunch of the yeah, a bunch of the ports that are gonna be deleting tonight or today. Um, extra clamps, thank god. I did go out and order a bunch of extra ones. Like you can never have too much hose clamps in the car industry, but I'm just so happy that they actually came with them. And then once again we have more, so yeah, let's um let's get started here. So I'm just going to take a look at some things and then I'll bring you guys up to date. Alright guys, so to get started here, honestly, I just want to take off a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to take off this whole intake system here. So pretty basic, like, you know I mean, you got your your clamp for your intake pipe here. Um, the MAF sensor, which we're just going to obviously keep, we're going to separate it from the actual um, uh, air box here. So I just want to get rid of some of this stuff. That way I can actually get some access down to where I'm going to be working. Um, you know, I mean, if I'm going to be doing a, a big build on this, I want to make sure everything's done right. And that means having the most access I can get to it. Um, not even that, it just gives me more practice and more knowledge of the actual um, car and how everything's run down here. Um, so yeah, so pretty basic. You're just going to want to take off. I mean, you got some screws here. They'll take off the top cover. And then I believe that looks like a 10 mil. I haven't even attempted it yet, but um, yeah, let's try to get this whole box assembly off here as well as the hose. Um, this is also a good time too. Like if you like to start marking stuff, um, if you're not sure where to put everything after, but um, from what I've learned so far is obviously you got your diverter valve here. If you're new to the Volkswagens, you got your hockey puck, which is part of the PCV. And then this, I believe is called the N75 valve. So I just think that the most complicated one is the N75. But um, yeah, so let's get this air box off and uh, start moving some lines. Just as I'm going along here, I'm just going to keep you guys posted on everything. So um, this would be a good time just to check your air box. Like, holy jumping, I got a bee in there. Bee, dirt, everything. But um, yeah, I mean, the MAF sensor, make sure you guys keep it kind of out of the way with everything. Just to, um, you know I mean? You don't want no dirt and anything getting in there. Um, as far as this box goes so far, so that is a 10 mil and then you guys can, well obviously you can see where my ratchet is, but if you guys look down there, uh, where are you? there you go baby, yeah so there's another 10 mil right there that should take it off. Alright so now you can kind of see everything better, like look at that, way more room, but anyway so you can see where I have the coolant leaking out. Crombie valve is just soaked. Now, most of that might be coming from the valve cover gasket at the same time, but yeah, I mean, and like this is such cheap plastic, like from back in the day, so um, yeah, you know I mean, I know it's a, it's a little bit more steps to do, guys, but you know I mean, if you take out that intake, like so much more room here. So what we're gonna do now too is, um, so this is your brake boost line. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna cut this line off. However, you do not wanna ruin this check valve. So make sure you keep this check valve because pretty much ultimately what we're gonna be doing here is running um, the brake boost line from here. And then we're gonna be putting it into this port from what I understand. Um, this is part of the um, uh, crankcase, I believe or one of the vacuum ports that's underneath the manifold here. But um, yeah, so when you guys do the brake boost line, just make sure you guys keep that check valve in. And it, can, it you'll see it on there, like it says which way. It has like these little arrows. I think you guys can see it. Yeah, there you go. So it says uh, motor, and then it has your little tiny arrow there. Um, but yeah, just make sure. This is gonna be a huge pain to get off. I'm gonna try just take like a, um, a knife, exacto knife, and see if I can just split it. And that way I can take right off, but we'll see how that uh, how that goes.
There it is right there, guys. Just be careful. Like, this is plastic. So, literally, all you have to do is just do a little splice here. Um, and then I grabbed a flathead screwdriver and just kind of lightly pried it off. Um, you know what I mean? Just, you don't want to break this. Um, just because God knows how fragile or how, um, um, you know what I mean, worn this thing is from over the years. Judging by all the other plastic on this motor. So, just be careful with that. So as we make our way around here too, um, as you can see, um, that side is still the way I left it with the last the last edit there. Um, so just the intakes off, brake boost lines off. Um, just looking at some of the videos, uh, I know a lot of guys have been kind of starting on this side. Um, but yeah, anyways, just another tip too when you're doing stuff like this, like if you're gonna take one thing off and you kind of have an idea of what's gonna happen, like we all know that this port that goes into the throttle body has got to be capped off. Do it as you go, it just makes it so much easier for you. And at the same time, you can kind of see, lay everything out. That way you're not guessing on, you know, I mean, what cap goes where. You kind of have an idea with it, but um, yeah. So you're gonna want to take this line off and then you're gonna want to cap this port that's on top of the, like I said, the throttle body here. I mean, just take one of the clamps and pretty basic. You just want to tighten it down. Don't crush it, but just kind of keep it nice and firm on there. And we're going to start taking this stuff off. You can kind of see where this line goes underneath. So that goes part of the fuel rail. Um, these little clamps. Uh, here we go. This guy right here. So honestly, like, you can put a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver in there. And then you can pry it and it will kind of take these. I wish this thing would focus, but it will kind of take off that little lip that's kind of sitting in there um but you know if you don't have the time nor the patience for that um i just used some um side cutters kind of just to squeeze it as i as i took it off but um yeah so let's see how we can get more of this stuff off and then we'll bring you guys back so like i said guys so this piece right here it's got this little check valve in it you're going to want to take it off that bottom rail um, and then what you're going to want to do is, uh, right here, just along the fender, you'll see these two 10 mils. They're kind of holding this bracket right here. So you're going to want to take that off. So it's like I said, just the two 10 mils come up pretty easy. Um, this is your first resistor. So you're going to want to unplug. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, you're going to want to unplug this right here. I'm pretty basic, you know what I mean? Just push down. And you'll be able to pull it out. It's kind of hard to do with one hand right now. And then you're going to want to plug one of your resistors in there. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to follow these lines. It's a part of this contraption here. So they go up into these two clips. Just on the side of the coolant ball. You kind of see them right there. And then you're going to take them off which looks to be a charcoal canister, I'm assuming it is. So we're gonna take them off of here, and then we're gonna plug this thing up with our vacuum caps. Make sure you do not forget to plug that fuel rail there also. So out of all the resistors, you guys get three of them. This is the largest one, and it kind of has the round tip on the end of it. Um, this is the one you're gonna plug into this connector that came off of this contraption here. Um, you know what I mean? Obviously, once it's all uh, sealed up, which I will say Eurotang did a pretty good job on on their seals here, because this is all like heat shrinked. It's even got some, um, I mean, some sort of um, not glue, but uh, some sort of gasket stuff that they use to kind of keep any moisture out of it. Um, you know, I mean, once you get this whole thing out, you can tuck this away. Just make sure it doesn't get caught in, you know, I mean, your serpentine belt or stays anywhere that's too um, too hot or any other stuff, so I'm gonna find a spot to kind of zip tie this away. But um, yeah, so once we uh, get these lines out of here, um, sorry guys. there we go. So you're gonna pop these off, um, and from what I've been told, you're gonna kind of hear like a hissing sound, which is normal, it's just some pressure releasing. Um, but yeah, so let's get that. 
right guys, as you guys can see, we just had the ice cream truck come by. Yes, sir. Still going on, summertime, thank God, keep her going. Um, yeah, so here's your whole um, contraption over here, which is just an absolute spider web of lines. So we can toss that, we don't need that anymore. Um, we've already capped our line on the throttle body. Uh, here's the one on the bottom fuel rail, or part of the fuel rail. I think it's just an evap line, which makes sense. Um, this one, I wasn't fully sure, but you know, I mean, I capped it anyways. I'm just gonna make sure I clamp them. Uh, the resistor, like we've shown before, is already in. We're just gonna have to zip tie it nicely. And then don't forget the two ports on the actual canister here. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, one thing too, like when you're doing this, uh, these seem to be pretty sharp So like when you're actually Gonna be clamping things down like put them in a spot where you know, they're not gonna cut any other lines. So for example You know I mean for this one I'm not gonna put it like that because if it for some reason cuts this line. It's another line I'm gonna have to replace right? So you also want to put them in a spot where they're easy accessible So I know that you know I mean getting a screwdriver in there is gonna be a hell of a lot easier than putting a screwdriver in there like that's pretty basic stuff like i'm no full-time mechanic but um you know i mean most of the time when people like to do all this stuff we tend to rush want to get done as fast as possible that we don't actually think that if anything does go wrong in the future that we're gonna have to go back there and fix something so um i mean just a little advice as we're going along here but yeah let's just get these clamps on and then we're gonna move over back to the other side of the engine and uh, go from there. And now we're gonna move ourselves over to um, some of this vacuum line stuff here. And when I mean vacuum line, I mean like the legit air pump line. So we have, just trying to step on my tools. So we have this plate, annoying plate, that's gonna come out um, pretty basic. It just has the two Allen keys that go in there and the two 10 mils. So pretty much these lines run down to your air pump which is way down there underneath the uh, AC compressor, which I'll show you guys when we go down there. But um, yeah, that's the next step to get all this stuff out. Um, and that should allow us some pretty good access to get to our dipstick tube, which is broken <laughs> as, as per usual. And um, yeah, so let's um, start moving this around. As you can see here came off a lot easier than I thought and then you move on to the second one here and then you can kind of see the green allen bolts which are what looks like to be actual corrosion but um yeah so let's do that let's get at them all right guys so once you guys have this thing <clears throat> unbolted here you can kind of see it so we're going to take off you can kind of see the clip on this other um uh, electrical connection here and you can kind of see this one there too so pretty much we're going to take both these off and that's going to be the last two of our resistors which are both the same size so you can't mix them up um yeah then what we're going to do after that is these two lines that come off we're going to get rid of them this right here i gotta take a look at it but this thing is just the hockey lace i'm going to call it it's just mangled now i don't know if that's from the diverter valve or if it's from the fuel pressure regulator. Oh no, sorry, the fuel pressure regulator is underneath here, right there. So those are gonna be replaced anyways, just because this thing is um, just rotten. So um, yeah, so let's take this off. So like I said, these two are gonna come off and then we're gonna put our resistors in here. And then I'll give you a good view of everything that's kind of underneath, which I will get to as, uh, oh, as there's a oil cap just sitting down there. <laughs> God knows how long that's been there for. But um, yeah, so let's get those off. Um, just be careful, even though I'm gonna be replacing my dipstick tube, um, if you're not, or if you don't have the part, just be careful, because this thing is so brittle right now that any sort of movement just seems to crack it worse and worse as we do stuff here. But um, yeah, so let's get these two resistors off and or on, and we'll get these two lines off and go from there. So right underneath, there you go. Right underneath in there, there's another 10 mil. So that's holding the other vacuum hose on, the other air pump hose. So you're gonna wanna take that off too. Um, once these hoses are out, like it should be 
pretty easy to get your hands in there. It's just right now they're just like they're they're trained to be one one kind of rooting or one um, to be aligned up a certain way. So if you go to move them out of the way, they just go right back to where they want to be. But um, yeah, just a little tip as you guys are doing it. All right, guys. So here's where we're at right now. So we have our our electric connections there, and here's the other one that's popped off now. Um, once you get that 10 mil off, you get these lines out of the way. Um, now you can see how much more access you have. So you can see here the dipstick tube. It's like it's cracked definitely at the bottom, but no pieces have fallen down into there, um, which is obviously a good thing, even though I would suggest after you do this whole thing, um, just to be safe, uh, especially if you're gonna do the dipstick, um, change your oil, you know what I mean? You never know what's gonna get in there, right? But anyways, you can kind of see the crankcase breather. So we'll be getting that out shortly. Um, it's got like a C-clip on it that you're gonna have to pull out towards you and then that thing will pop off. Um, now I showed you guys the, um, the piece that came from Euro tuning, which is all fine and dandy, but uh, we're gonna be putting in that billet um, piece with the AN fitting, just cause that's what we're gonna run for the catch can. Um, so yeah, right now, let's just try to get this thing off still. We got these two lines. Oh, there goes my 10 mil. Um, so let's get these two lines off, which we have. And then this shoelace, hockey lace, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, I kind of snipped that. I still got to figure out where that goes. Um, regardless of me cutting it off or not, like it's got to be replaced anyways. But I'm pretty sure that is from the diverter valve. Um, if not, then I'm about to find out the hard way. But anyways, um, there's a T fitting here that comes off this whole unit and it goes into one of the ports. So we're gonna wanna get that off. And then down under here, I believe we're gonna be taking this stuff also, but I'll get back to you guys on that one. But um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are following along okay. Uh, trying to be as patient with me as you can. But um, yeah, so let's get this whole thing off and take another look again. All right guys, so here's our uh, little uh, plate with all our lines. It's off the motor now. So toss that again in the pile we don't need. Here's the resistors. So again, these are just the remaining two. They plug right in. Um, once again, you wanna put these in place where they're not gonna get any um, too much heat or get caught up in anything, especially around the alternator here. Um, our tube. So like this thing is just dickered big time, but we're gonna fix that later on. I don't want to do it just yet um, So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be taking off this whole setup right here so This is all part of the part of the brake boost line so you can see how the brake boost lines right here runs the manifold then this piece goes down into where this setup is which will go into these two ports and then it kind of tees into the PCV valve here or crankcase breather sorry um so yeah let's work on getting this thing off so as you guys can see here we have our whole brake boost line that's out now so this portion of it obviously was going to this port now we're going to use this for the new brake boost line it's going to go over to where our check valve is like i mentioned earlier and then this piece right here is what went in between the manifold and it kind of connects to this piece here so this thing's got a bunch of goober that's just kind of holding it together but um yeah we're going to take a take a look at what we have to do here next um judging from what i can see is we're going to be moving kind of this line so this line that runs to the inlet pipe it runs underneath here to a hard line and then it kind of goes back down and then it attaches to here so we're we'll taking that off and then we have ourselves um a t fitting that's part of the crankcase breather so as it goes up to this kind of sorry guys t fitting there it connects and then we have another line that runs up and it goes into part of the, the air, um, the vacuum reservoir right here. So um, yeah, so let's just get this thing out of the way for now. That goes to the junk pile. 
um, yeah let's work on getting this thing off still and um, yeah once we do that we might give this thing a bit of a cleaning at the same time too I gotta go underneath and take these hoses off from the air pump so I know my air pumps already just hang in there at the bottom um, pretty common I think once these things get old but um, yeah uh, let me just kind of get this stuff taken off here and then I'll update you guys soon again. So here is the air pump underneath. So you can kind of see how this thing's pretty loose still. It's mostly broken. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to unclip this um, electrical connection here. I'm not sure exactly what... Um, I mean, I don't think there's a resistor or anything for it, but we're gonna work on getting that but um these i think are just like 10 mil bolts but my thing's completely broken as it is so i'm gonna see um if i can get these things unclipped and then take this pump out so we got this thing out now so um i mean i know some people we either just take the vacuum lines out or the air hose lines out and then they just kind of leave um i mean this thing sitting in here um i actually went ahead and took the whole bracket out now it is a huge pain in the ass to get to, but if you can kind of see, there's these two uh, threads, threaded ports that are into the block. And if you follow the one up beside the dipstick tube, you can kind of see another one. Um, I can't really point out just cause I have one hand on the camera here, but um, what I found was the best way. So they're an eight mil um, Allen bolt. So yeah, here they are right there and um an eight mil um yeah eight mil allen bolt i don't know if it's focusing but um anyway so the best way i could get to it was on the top i had um, a long extension which was so this guy right here um yeah six inch extension here on a swivel so on a swivel ratchet and then um same thing um, for the one that's on the right side, so this guy right here, I was actually able just to get a, an Allen key. So a six or a eight mil Allen key fit right on there, no problem. You just have to move the, the air pump around. And then um, the pain of them all was this left one here. Um, so I had a small extension, this little guy. So just a little three inch extension with um, just a straight head, fixed head on the ratchet. But um. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it just opens up so much stuff. And like I said, um, I can, you know what I mean? Now I can get in there and actually, like, clean the engine block up a bit and really uh, take care of it. And, and like I said earlier, any future issues I have as far as any leaks or whatever, at least I kind of know where they're coming from. But, um, yeah, so now we finally got this air pump thing out, which is just a nuisance. Here's the bracket. Let's toss that. I'm actually going to put the the um, bolts back in just to kind of like I mean, cover up the threads because you never know um even if i ever want to use those ports if i do a bracket for or something else like i'm going to try to run an oil cooler on this so if i want to run any um any brackets to mount anything or in the future you never know right but um yeah so let me put this uh, thing to the side look at all this crap coming out oh my gosh look at that what a freaking mess so this is why we need a catch can guys like you can see so look at all the oil and that's like solid dirt that's all in there you know what i mean like that's this is the reason why we're doing this um even here like from the crankcase like that just broke just by even looking at it um i mean that's the last thing you want to deal with with uh, any boost leak any sort of oil leak but look at all the stuff in there so like all that's recirculating and going back into my engine um which is the reason why yeah we're gonna do the catch can and everything so um just when you think you know why it's maybe not worth all the work there you go so as we're moving along here like i said we got this thing off um next thing you want to do is um disconnect the diverter valve so like even there you can see some of the oil and stuff that's in there um just we're just gonna put this off to the side for now um, just because I'm going to do a separate video on the actual turbo inlet pipe itself. Um, I don't want to like try to confuse everyone in between everything. So, um, what I'm going to kind of do is I'm just trying to make room for everything because we do have to take this hockey puck off. Um, so that's one thing you want to do. And then you're going to have to take off 
this port right here, which we're going to be blocking later on. Um, you can see, so there's the three bolts. You're going to lose a little bit of coolant, but you're going to have to undo this little um, clamp right here, as well as this one there, and then the one on the bottom. And then that will give us access to get the, the actual coolant valve off. Or not valve, I'm sorry, the coolant neck off, because we're going to be replacing that with... Um, with the aluminum one that came in, in with our shipment, right? So, um, yeah, you can see like all the, all the stuff that's down there. And then this is the last of uh, the air pump tubes. So it just runs into the crombie valve here. I think it's called a crombie valve. I could be wrong. If if I am, then I've been saying it wrong this whole time. But um, yeah, and then that's uh, that looks like an Allen fitting of some sort. So we'll work on getting that off if I can. Hopefully I can. Hopefully it's not a star fitting, but um, yeah. Okay, so we got the hockey puck coming out here now. So there's another piece gone, guys. As you can see, throw it away. And like you can see how much more room we have in here now. So, excuse me. So this is our diverter line right here going to the crombie. Gonna take that off and then we're taking this vacuum reservoir out um yeah we took that bracket off so that bracket just had that one line there that we really did not need so um yeah it worked out pretty good now we just gotta work on getting this thing out so what you're gonna want to do is you want to get in there get some of the stuff out of the way and then you have yourself you guys can see honestly these air conditioning lines are driving me nuts today but that's all right i've never really had a car with air conditioning but um so yeah so you have a c-clip that's right there so you're going to want to pull it back towards you it's kind of hard to do with the camera but once it clips out then you'll be able to take out your uh, crankcase breather and then vice versa when you install the new fitting pop it right back in and you'll be good to go yeah so if you look down here there's a little 10 mil if you take that off you can see this bracket moves around um i'm just gonna take it off just gonna have a hard time getting an actual good grip on this c-clip here but um yeah just another 10 mil just remember to put it back when you're uh when you're done with it all right guys so my camera actually died there for a bit but um what i was doing while it was recharging was so there's the the new an fitting for the the crankcase breather and obviously the new dipstick. Now the dipstick's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be pretty <clears throat> brittled, so pretty much, I mean, I took off as much of the sleeve as I could. And then down here, there was still like uh, a couple pieces of it that were still attached. So I just kinda made sure nothing went in the hole and uh, took a flathead screwdriver and just kinda pried everything off. But um, that turned out okay. Um, this thing was a huge pain, if I'm honest. So um, the stock one actually broke. Uh, where did it go? So there you go. The stock one actually broke pretty bad. Um, I mean, it's all kind of diggered up here. I was, I was trying to get it out, but, um, you know, sometimes it happens. So there's the other part of it right there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but. So anyways, um, I was able to get it out. You gotta really reef on that uh, C-clip to come out. So this is from CTS. Um, I did pick it up at Das Parts if you're in Canada, um, local place around here, but um, make sure when you do buy one that you do get the O-ring and to reinstall it, you're gonna have to really put your weight on it to get that thing down enough so that the clip goes in. But um, if you see <clears throat> right here, like it's solid. Um, I've seen some guys do this and they don't put the o-ring in and the thing just hops around all over the place. So um, Yeah, that's done. And then we put our AN fitting into our, our valve cover So um, the only thing I had to do with this was Just kind of shave it down a little bit just on the inside because the stock one here um, You mean this I don't know if maybe the AN fitting is a little bit bigger but like it was really 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 tough to to hammer it in there without it going crooked and all over the place so i just took it to one of my bench grinders and just kind of shaved a bit down um put a little bit, bit of lubricant on it and then uh yeah you know what i mean hammer it in there 
um, I used my where I put it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I, just a rubber hammer. You know, what I mean, you don't want to reef on it too much, but um, I mean, give it a couple good hits. Um, I mean, when you do do it, I would suggest putting like a towel or something just so you don't damage anything. So removing this, just a C-clip, just make sure when you guys take it off, some coolant is going to come out. So just get this thing out of the way, to make sure no dirt gets on it. Now we're going to work on getting this air tube off. And the reservoirs, so we'll start up here at the top. So there's the reservoir right there. Now, if you guys want to take off this bracket, you can take this bracket off too, um, just in case you want, you, know, you want to go for looks. These are just some of the things that we don't really need anymore. So we got just two Allens down there. Alright, so you guys can see the coolant neck is now gone. Like, look at all the oil all around here. Oh my gosh. So it's definitely coming from the valve cover gasket, which I'm going to try to do today. And don't be afraid to give this thing a good wipe down, clean it off. Obviously, we're going to have to put a new gasket on the coolant uh, reservoir, or reservoir, um, the coolant um, a port here. So, anyways, to get the crombie valve off, as you can see, we have our three... Allen bolts, as you can hear more coolant falling out when I'm moving the hose, but um, yeah, so let's get this thing off. This whole contraption is kind of all together. Once we take this thing out, it's going to look so much better, way easier to work on. Alright, so she's nice and loose now. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is, so this line right here, you kind of see attached. It's one of the last lines that's holding the crombie valve on right now. Um, so this runs to pretty much to where your turbo is, your inlet pipe. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to block that. I'm probably going to do kind of block it right at the pipe just because when I put the, the aftermarket one in, just to keep it clean, I don't have any random lines just sticking up in the engine bay. But um, yeah, once you guys take this thing off, this whole valve will come off. So let's just do that right now. a good snip there's just a wire holding on here There we go. All right. All right, guys. So, again, looking at our pile here. Look at all this. So we got our whole crombie valve. This is what it's going to look like when it comes out. So this is an air tube. I ran down to the air pump. And then you got your three Allen keys. Um, this hose right here was from the diverter valve. That went up and then we had our um hose that ran down to our turbo inlet pipe and then um yeah your two lines that were towards um where the crankcase filter was or sorry the um, this plate right here so if we put it all back together This is all the passenger side. And we have our air pump. Like, look at all this mess. All right, so what we're gonna do now, um, while we're waiting for the valve cover to dry off, is we're gonna put our plate on. So you can see, this is the SAI right here. So that's where our plate's gonna go. So what we have is our O-ring. 
We have our two um, Allen bolts here, and then the Euro tuning with the logo on it. There's your, your cover. So I'm just gonna take it out here. What we're gonna do here is put the O-ring in there like so. That way we create a nice seal. So let me just put this thing on. All right guys, hopefully you guys can see this. So there's the cover right there. Just trying to line everything up perfectly. All right, so this is your Euro tunings upgraded um, aluminum coolant neck that comes with the kit as you guys saw earlier. So just remember to put your gasket on. Um, yeah, pretty sweet, you know what I mean? Once again, just for more durability on the track. The last thing I want to do is do this job again because it's starting to get on my nerves as much as I do enjoy it. But um, yeah, so let's toss this thing on there. Grab these 10 mils, like out of all the nuts they have to use, they have to use the 10 mil, right? Which we all know is probably one of the hardest sockets to find because we seem to lose them all the time. But that's all right. The bottom one on here. Let's be very careful with this new one. It's the last thing I need is for it to break. so that's all mounted up now look how good that looks so much better so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these hoses back on and then we are gonna go back to the front here and you can kind of see these two nipples so I just took a look I I totally forgot I should do when I uh, took the lines off like I said earlier but um, yeah so we're gonna plug those two and then these two ports Underneath here is what we're going to use for one for our diverter valve and the other one is going to be for a regulator um, I'm just going to run some vacuum lines um, Temporary for now just because I do have some silicone vibrant lines coming in and then we're going to do our um, brake booster here And then after that I should mostly wrap up the stuff All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up the EVAP and um, yeah, SAA delete on this first episode of the Time Attack build for the DOS boot for Max Attack Motorsports. Um, yeah, just a quick overview of everything. So just make sure you double check <coughs> all your connections and all your um, caps. So we got our one on the um, the what's called the throttle body here and then we have one on this line going underneath and then we have our first resistor right here this line going down to the bottom our two lines on our evap canister and then moving around we have our two that are underneath uh, the intake manifold as well as our other two resistors and then we did remove our full air pump um, including the bracket which was a huge bitch to do but well worth it so there's the the AN fitting going into there as I showed earlier and we're gonna be running up to this fitting right here I'm gonna have a T to our catch can and then we'll be going into our where a hockey puck was which is in the inlet pipe here um, but yeah other than that, the diverter valve is not fully hooked up just yet. So if you guys are going to be keeping all your stock stuff here, just remember that you're going to have to run a vacuum line from here to this port right there. I already did the fuel pressure regulator one here. Um, just temporary for now until I get my silicone hoses in. Uh, yeah, so other than that, everything else is just going to kind of stay like this. This is what your end result looks like at the bottom with your block off plate, the um, coolant neck um, 
uh, what's called a uh, unit here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we got our brake boost line back up and running. Remember guys, make sure you keep the check valve in there and double check everything you guys do. All right guys, so stay tuned. And um, yeah, so the next video, I'm gonna hopefully get this catch can going here and um, be able to do the inlet pipe as well. So thanks a lot. Leave a comment, subscribe if you want to. Don't forget to check us out at uh, Max Attack Motorsports on Instagram. And hopefully we can get this baby running soon. Take care.